Okay, so I did this video yesterday on Risk OS, and in the comments, Robert Enzo said maybe you can have a look at MX Linux for Raspberry Pi Beta. So I did a search for Linux MX Raspberry Pi 4, and It's Fast has done a story on it, and uh, there's also a download link in there. So if you click on that story, uh, you can scroll down a bit, and, and you can see there's a download link there, which takes you here. And you can download this one, and this is the download to use MX Fluxbox Raspberry Pi Respin Beta Image.xz. Uh, it's 2.3 gig, and uh, I've been really, really impressed with it. So let's close down these two pages, and let's just minimize to show you the desktop. Uh, a nice looking desktop. Uh, I really love the right click option, which gives you all these things. So, uh, for instance, all apps uh, comes up, but you can also just start typing. So. I wanted to know if Gparty was installed, and it is. Uh, and if you double click on that, it might be single click, uh, type in the password, which by default is Raspberry, uh, and you can see that Gparty comes up. Uh, it already, the partition was already expanded, so uh, it's using all of my 240 gig SSD drive that I'm using on this, so you can see it's SSD compatible. Uh, it looks like it's based on Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit, and the great thing about that is compatibility. Uh, so Raspberry Pi OS uh, and the same with Twister OS, they're the most compatible systems. And because this is based on that, you've got so much compatibility with the Pi. And I've already installed, uh, which didn't come in it, uh, which is fine because uh, you can't have everything in it, but uh, I've already installed Pi Apps, uh, which is here, uh, and I've also done Pi Kiss as well. Uh, and you can see I can find it. So there's two different ways you can search for the apps, and I love the fact that it does this. So I can click down the bottom here uh, and just start typing, and uh, it comes with the normal add remove software, so the standard one that would come with the 32-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS. And I still maintain that you're better off with a 32-bit operating system on a Raspberry Pi based on Raspberry Pi OS because the compatibility is there and so everybody tends to write games and programs and things to run on that system on the Pi and, and it just is, is really, really good. I've also installed Commander Pi as well as an easy way of overclocking and also monitoring the system as well. Uh, it is a great program. So it comes with an intro video. So if I double click on that, it opens up in VLC which is already pre-installed and uh, they go through and, and tell you about the system. But I'm not going to go with that. Uh, I'm just going to do what I usually do on operating systems and kind of look through and, and see how logical I think it is. So uh, there's a help button here, uh, and you can see it already says uh, Fluxbox, right click desktop to edit, click settings, configure menus, uh, all apps with categories F6 or click MX logo on traditional menu. Very fast and handy, right click MX logo on traditional panel, MX tools, F5 or any of the above. So there's documentation there, and if I close that down, what's the next one? The one, one thing I would change is the files icon. I, I, just, I just don't see it as a, as a folder, uh, and I like my files icon to be a folder. Not an issue, uh, and I'm sure it's very easy to change. But uh, this is the files app, uh, and what I usually do is do go and network and see if it finds my NAS drive, which it looks like it has. Obviously, I only needed to single click, not double click on that. So click on public. Oh, and it does this. It does this on Twister as well. Um, so if I go to this bit, that will take me into public and then I can browse through that. It's nice and fast and everything is single click, which I quite like. So let's close that down. Uh, so this MX tools, so if we click on that, uh, here we've got a nice sort of settings menu. Uh, here we've got, so boot options. Pop in that password again. Enable theme, messages very detailed, display log, right. Clean up. If we hover over, look, clean up. Quick and safe the removal of old files. Uh, user manager, codex installer, con key. Oh yeah, so um, that's the system monitor that, that comes up on the side where you can display temperatures and disk usage and things like that. Date and time, network assistant, select sound. All sorts of fixes and tweaks in here. Nicely presented as well. So we've got VLC on there. Uh, we've got a clone Raspberry Pi clone SD card. Oh yeah, so that looks like the USB SD card copier, uh, which works very well. Uh, so what's this one? Oh, this is a beginner's guide to Raspberry Pi, uh, which I thought was a nice touch to put on there. It's a really, 
really friendly, really logical operating system. I, I'm super impressed with this. Uh, so Raspberry Pi configuration is there as well. Uh, so you can see various different things in here. Oh, the overscan. Now, I, I overscan was uh, enabled, so I had a black border at first, but it, it that's a way you can do it. I did it from the config.txt, but uh, obviously it was in here, so I could have done it from here. Interface, performance, localization. So same settings as Raspberry Pi OS. Office Suite, so LibreOffice comes installed and looks fine. You can see the terminals there. Uh, and if I do NeoFetch, which I've installed as well, here we go. So Raspberry and Linux 10 Buster, Raspberry Pi 4. This is my 8 gig Raspberry Pi 4. So it's running at 1920 by 1080. Uh, and I've overclocked to 2147. I'll show you the, uh, let's go back to terminal and I'll show you how I did that. So sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config dot text. So I disabled the overscan to get rid of the black border. Uh, and I also have added a couple of overclocking lines, which are here, over voltage underscore equals eight and arm frequency equals 2147. It's just what I generally do on my Pi. Uh, I'm running it with an ice tower cooler, so passively I'm not using the fan on it and, uh, and it hasn't had any issues at all. Let's close that. So this is a mail app. I never use a mail app. I always just use a web browser, um, but, uh, but it's nice to see it on there. I don't know what happens if I right click. No, right click doesn't do anything. So Firefox is the web browser that's installed and feels pretty snappy, feels reasonable. Um, YouTube performance at 1080 isn't good, but there's various different tweaks we can do to that to improve that. We don't want to be paying, we don't want to be playing 1080 60 on the Pi. Uh, but if I do the PSP video and HDR, so let's click on my video. And let's skip the ads. Pop some audio on just to show you that the audio is working. I'm just using the three and a half mil audio output and it works fine with that. But video performance seems to be pretty decent at 720 as I say. So if I go to Stats for Nerds and go to full screen. So we've got no frames or it looked like it dropped some frames then but obviously it was changing between. Uh, so four frames of 834. So it's dropped four frames out of 1500 and it keeps going. So let's get rid of that and hit escape to get rid of that, to minimize that. But back to these menus. So what was this one down the bottom here? So settings, flux box. Uh, oh, this is cool down the bottom here. So uh, this symbol is red when there's updates needed. So it says no updates available. Uh, and so if I put in Raspberry again, so you can see there's there's no packages that need updating. But when it was read, I clicked on it and it offered to automatically update. It updated and everything worked fine. This is a clipboard manager, uh, and so it remembers various different things you've done, and you can go straight back to them. I really like the fact that that's just there as standard. This is uh, to do with my Wi-Fi. Obviously, that's my speaker. It did, when you click on this to shut down, uh, you have to go right the way over to the other side of the screen at the top to power off uh, or reboot uh, or log out uh, or lock the screen as well. Um, and that works nicely. Uh, I don't know why it wouldn't come down here, maybe. So it's you click on it and then it's very close by. But that's just a personal preference. And it does seem very configurable. So obviously you can play around with that if that's what you want to do. So let's go back to these two uh, so launchers. So click on here and uh, I can just start typing in, say, Imager, which isn't installed. Yeah, so Raspberry Pi Imager isn't in there, but obviously very easy to install from Add Remove software. Um, but again, Gparted came up by just pressing GP, uh, PyKiss. This is the way I like to search for apps, uh, and I ju just find it very, very logical. But also, we've still got these options of just flicking through these. So accessories, you can see there's, there are loads of things that have been added on here. Uh, development, education, graphics, internet, so just Firefox on there, but we could put Chromium on if we want. Uh, so there's a few different things for multimedia. Office suite, you can see there. Settings option. So this is, I guess, the same as this one here. Probably the same options that come up. Then we go to Ordinary System. 
few more options in there. Oh, and there's a preferences option here. Remember last selected, always center the window. Yeah, very nice. But it is this right clicking, which doesn't do what you would expect it to do uh, on a normal operating system. The fact that it's got the all apps here, launch the browser, go into email, go into file manager. I really like that. So wherever your mouse is, just click on it, file manager. I could definitely get used to this as an operating system. Uh, it's one of the most impressive that I've had that I've just downloaded and tried and everything has worked really, really well. Uh, and I like the speed of it. So let's go back to this right click. So out of sight, kill dock, kill a window, toggle conkey, toggle IDES. So there's loads of things on here. Fluxbox is, is a great feature. Settings about backup, configure, keyboard, Fluxbox. Appearance, dock. Monitors, style, theme, toolbar. I'm not going to mess around with the theme because I actually kind of like it. Uh, I might change the background, but uh, but I, I just just think the way that everything works is is very very well done. So I think what I'll do is uh, do another video on just the basic setup and in, and installing a few things that I like to install in it. But I, I don't think I'm going to mess about with the theme at all. I really like the way this works. It's a great operating system. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.